Okay, hi guys. Today I'm here to give you an honest review of GetResponse um, now that I have tried the webinar feature for the first time. So some of you know that I've been um, testing and looking at email autoresponders that have workflow automation and landing pages. And one of the reasons why I chose GetResponse is because of the webinar component. I was spending $359 on just the webinar component alone with GoToWebinar, and so I was looking for something that I could use for my coaching clients as part of my email list, and I wanted to give you a little bit of feedback. All right, first, let me show you how easy this is to set up your um, webinar here. All right, so first thing we do is we go up here to the dash bar, dashboard and we go to webinars. Next, you basically set up your webinar. We go to create, we do test, basic settings so you could put something in your um, message that'll be sitting in the lobby. So for example, I've got a free trial to listings to leads. So I'm going to put listings to leads.com. Okay. And then I'm going to click, do I want to create my own landing page or do I want, want their thank you page to appear? So the get response thank you page is like take a free trial, get response. If you want to have an upsell or another video for them to watch or homework or the next phase you need to create your own landing page or page hosted elsewhere you can actually just drive them ex to an external link anywhere you want them to go after that so you know like my people today are in, in my training course in my coaching program so maybe after the webinar I could have sent them straight to the um, training program on the next on phase two of their affiliate marketing course whatever it happens to be so you can you can do that if you want to and then um, all you do after that is click save this step and then registration and subscription settings now I like this you can actually automatically add registrants um, so add registrants or attendees to which list. So anybody who registers for this webinar, you can automatically put in a specific list. Now be careful about something. You are charged, You that contact is considered a contact when it's in a list. So if you have the same contact in two lists, it counts as two contacts. Where three lists, it counts as three, three contacts. So whatever your subscription is, keep an eye on that because they will count as multiple. And if all of a sudden you have people in five lists, they count as five contacts, your bill's gonna go up really quickly. So I learned that really quick and I started using tags versus creating too many lists, okay? But you might have somebody that's like on, that, that has subscribed to your blog, that's getting your blog RSS feed, but they're also in your coaching program and you need to get them their coaching email. So you might have them in two lists or you might work with the automated workflows and tags and do it differently. So just keep that in mind. All right, you can add an autoresponder cycle on a particular day. I'm not going to get into that today, but this is cool. Registration required. Do I want them to have to register or not? So for me, this particular webinar was only for seventh stream affiliate coaching clients. So these are my clients that I'm teaching, coaching, guiding on how to do affiliate marketing. So for them, I only sent the invite to those people. And so I didn't need them all to re-register and it would have been a pain for them to have to register. So I just didn't have the registration on. Now mine's a small group. When I've got webinars that are for 100 people, 200 people, 1,000 people, it's a totally different story. But I knew that if I had over a certain count today that I could quickly look at the names and boot somebody out if they're not supposed to be there. Wasn't a big deal. So for me, this made sense, okay? So then you're gonna go ahead and click create. Um, oh yes, pick the date that you want it to be on. I'm just putting, making this a test here. And then create, okay, super, super easy. Now from here, you can send an invitation, create another webinar, manage your webinars, or go to, go to the dashboard. Okay, so send an invitation. Now I want to invite people to my webinar. So the message name that you're gonna see, it's just gonna appear in the list of messages, webinar invites which list it is you're inviting, my coaching client, subject, your webinar invitation, and then I like to put in 
the first name field in the email, and then who's it from, click next step. Now you're gonna get a bunch of templates. So you can pick any of these templates or you can use a generic um, whatever. So like I created just a generic little um, email for mine with a webinar button. So you could do that or you could choose one of theirs, however fancy you wanna be. So let's just say I'm just gonna use this little one here. Use the template. Okay, now look down here to make sure that the webinar has the right date and time. Um, if it doesn't, or there's not one dropped in there, it's supposed to drop in automatically as part of the webinar um, e templates. But if not, just go down here and click webinar. And it'll drag right in there into your, um, right up to where it's supposed to be. So there's mine right there. See where it says test? I could drag that and put it down somewhere else, but there it is. So then they'll be able to click through and register. So see on the right hand side, that's what it looks like. Join now. Okay. So however you want to do that, once you get that done, I like to save mine as a draft or save it as a template so that I can get back to it and use it again later. So I'm saving all of my drafts as templates basically. Then click next step and it'll tell you to choose a list. Who do you want to send it to? And then you can choose segments in the list, whatever. And then you hit the button and you can choose to send it now or send it whenever you want to. Okay, then you're done. Now, next thing you can do once your webinar has been set up is you go back to get response. So that part's easy. My honest review, I really like that process. Setting up the webinar is super easy. Inviting everybody is super easy. There's also automation tools to remind people if you want to accept registrants and remind them the day before, an hour before, you can do all of that. For me, this time, I just created the one invite and then I did, this morning I got up and just really quick typed up an invite and sent it out to everybody. Because um, mine are all in a Facebook group, so I didn't feel, I reminded them in there as well. So I didn't need too many recurring, but you can do it that way. Now, once you're done, we come up here to these dots and we just go into webinars. Now, I had never done, used any of this today. The only problem I had was... When I tried to share my screen on the webinar, I freaked out because I got a whole bunch of little boxes that appeared. Now what's weird is I sent, after the webinar, I sent in a help, I did a help chat with GetResponse. By the way, they are so responsive. With They've helped me with everything. Um, and I should have just chatted with them right then, but I was on a webinar, you know? So I just didn't do my screen share and it wasn't that important for this particular webinar. But when I went back in and did the help file, she asked me to repeat the process, and then I couldn't get it to repeat. It worked perfectly fine. So I'm not sure what I did that first time. It was probably user error because I'm new to the software, okay? But it was super easy. Now watch how this works. So here's the recording afterwards. Here was today's webinar. Here's the recording. You just open this, and you can see it. Click on the three dots. You can delete it or download it, okay? So I downloaded it, and let me show you what it looks like. I will say that it's not the best quality. Um, I wouldn't be crazy about using this and then trying to put it back on a, on a YouTube video for promo. Take a look here. Well, and strategic about what you're doing there and who that is that you're attracting. And um, I know a lot of super, super active 70 to 80 year olds that are all over the internet, traveling and doing all kinds of things. But if you look at the numbers, that's when it still starts to fade off. So you gotta be watching for, is that the niche I wanna be doing? Do I... Now it's not terrible. Um, it's not terrible. It just isn't, su you know, there's a lag time. It seemed a little bit like pixelated and there were some moments of like little bits of flashing as I was going through and doing it. So, um, you know, I think this is great for live webinars and I think it's fine for the playback. But if I was really looking at, let me make these great webinars and also go turn them into YouTube videos, I'm not crazy about this quality, but it would still get the job done. It would still get the job done. Um, but if I just straight shoot from my regular camera, obviously it's gonna be a much better, higher quality. Uh, but I don't. I wouldn't mind taking sound bites out of this, and you can move this all around. There are um, this webinar room. Everybody sees the same thing, so everybody could see. This is either going to be your picture or an avatar. They have like little cartoon characters, 
or it's your video if you're on video then here you have your audience list and then down here you have the chat and everybody can see each other's chat and then this box here is either for PowerPoint presentation um, you can play YouTube videos you can do screen share here but you can change the room around like I could have made and I probably should have now in retrospect I could have made my camera this big screen down here and then I could have changed it later on if needed but I was nervous about not knowing the platform that well and I didn't want to be moving around too much so now that I've done it I kind of get the hang of it I'm like alright so I could have made my face bigger instead of being up in the corner since I didn't do active screen share the whole time so it's something to keep in mind a lifestyle blog okay now a lifestyle blog may not be at all what you want to do because so I may play with some microphones and see see if there's ways to even um, make that a little bit better. I did use the ca an external camera with a USB instead of the camera in my computer. Um, I was comparing this, by the way, with I was trying to decide between doing this or um, Zoom, and I do understand they say that Zoom has a better quality because of the way it records. The reason I, two reasons, the reason I didn't choose Zoom, not that I won't try it, but the reason I didn't choose Zoom was because um, they, everybody would have to download the app. They couldn't just access it from their computer or a URL. And that made me a little bit nervous. Plus, I was already buying an email software system. So to have something like GetResponse that has the webinar component inside of it saved me you know, right out of the gate making that um, movement. So for me, this made sense. If you don't need a webinar component, this may not be, you know, it, it, you might want to look at other, others. But I, I narrowed it down to Constant Contact, Get Response, and AWeber. And I didn't, I didn't like AWeber as much as other affiliate marketers do because I think it's, it's very techy and it, it looks like a developer built it. And I was afraid training beginner marketers that it it might be too um, you know it might not be as user friendly now I've heard reports of people saying that their get response emails don't get delivered as well as their Aweber I have not yet had that problem but I'm also working with small lists once I get into my larger list we'll have to see what happens with that and then I'll I would decide if that was an issue um, so far at least I can verify with this coaching group that they're getting their emails and and um, and it's fine so this is fantastic. I, I like the way this worked. I was able to access the webinar immediately. There was no delay. This is super easy to use. I can see how many invites I sent. I can see how many attendees were on. Um, I can start the webinar over. I can look at my invitation statistics. I can download the chat and I can download statistics. So maybe I want to download the chat and make a frequently asked questions and put it on the lesson plan for people you know to look at that's a great follow-up to a webinar is making a Q&A and we can look at it here it's a CSV file so we can open that up in Excel or pages or numbers or we can open it in Google Sheets and we can look down and go okay where did I miss alright I have no traffic on my website I write in crickets okay I didn't see that before so now I could put that on the Q&A and actually address it so that the person that asked the question can read it, plus everybody else can come back and learn from it as well. So my honest review today of Get Response at this point is good. I like the automation. I like the workflow. I like the webinar setup. I like the webinar platform. Um, I would say I don't like the fact that contacts are considered two contacts if they're in more than one list. That does bother me greatly. Um, otherwise, so far, I've, I've really enjoyed this. And in comparison to other email lists, it's, it's pretty comparable when it comes to how they count the subscribers. So there's a link for Get Response in this video. If you're interested in 7th Stream Coaching, check out 7thStreamCoaching.com.